right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another installment of our flip class. Today we're looking at uh, digestion part two, but this is going to be all about the enzymes that uh, facilitate those processes that we talked about last time. So we're going to look at some main ideas here, look at the big picture before we get started. Big picture is looking at our three mo macromolecules, our starch, proteins, and lipids, and what they break down into. So we have our glucose as our monomer, we have amino acids, and then our glycerol, and fatty acids. Also don't forget where they go, this is going right into our blood circulation system, and this one's going to go into the lymphatic system through a lacteal. And we'll touch more on that when we get to the lymphatic system. The other thing too is these enzymes are all hydrolytic. And hydrolytic enzymes mean that it needs water. And we know from before when we we're talking about our biomolecules that water facilitates this process two ways. One is it breaks apart the molecule. And two, it joins it. So our OH group and our H group join the monomers. So let's talk about starch first. Starch has three enzymes that we care about. Not that we care about, just three enzymes in general. The first one we're looking at uh, where it is we have starch being broken down into maltose. And the enzyme that's going to do this is called salivary amylase. So as you can see here, this is going to occur in our mouth. So the first time starch or carbohydrates are going to be broken down is in the mouth. It has an optimal pH. And this optimal pH is around 6 to 7. Uh, this is not the optimal pH for all of the enzymes, uh, but for this one it will be. So after this happens, we have maltose. And that maltose is going to end up being broken down further. Uh, but in the mouth, not all of the starch is going to be broken down. Some is going to continue on into our stomach and into our small intestine. So if it gets into our small intestine without being broken down, so again, we have our starch molecule, it will be broken down into maltose again, but this time by a different enzyme. What happens now is we have one called pancreatic amylase. Same process, breaks it down from starch into maltose but it does it in a different location. So this is in the small intestine. So I guess we'll say use in the small intestine. And it's made by, the name suggests, the pancreas. Optimal pH in the small intestine is in between 7 and 8. So that's what the optimal pH of this pancreatic amylase will be. Okay, so once that's done, now we have all of our starches broken down into maltose. Now we need that maltose to be broken down into our glucose monomers. And this will uh, be facilitated by the enzyme maltase. So maltase is going to be made in the small intestine and also used in the small intestine. Optimal pH of the small intestine is around 7 to 8. And the whole reason we need this glucose, as we remember, is this is used in cellular respiration in order to make ATP, which is our energy source. Okay, so that was starch. Proteins now. Similar in composition where we have three uh, major enzymes that are going to do the breaking down. Uh, before we even talk about the enzymes though, we're going to talk about hydrochloric acid. It has two purposes. One, it's going to cause this protein to denature. And this denaturing process just causes it to unfold uh, and allowing those enzymes to break it apart uh, a little easier. It also has another uh, function, so it denatures and then also activates pepsinogen, 
which turns into pepsin, and this is the active form of the enzyme. So here's our protein. Even though it doesn't show it, it's been denatured by the hydrochloric acid. It's going to be broken down by pepsin, which is now activated by the HCO. Uh, it's going to be breaking this protein down into something called a polypeptide. And a polypeptide, all it means is that it's approximately 50 or more uh, amino acids. So the only difference between a polypeptide and a peptide is polypeptides have more than 50 amino acids uh, bonded together, and peptides have less than 50. So we're looking for an optimal pH here. Pretty low because it's in the stomach, and it's approximately 2. Pepsin is going to be produced by the stomach, and it's going to be used in the stomach. So now we have our polypeptides. These polypeptides need to be broken down further, uh, and they're going to be doing this in the small intestine. So we have our polypeptides they need to be broken down further before it can be broken down in amino acids, and so we break it down into peptides first. The enzyme that facilitates this reaction is called trypsin. Trypsin is going to be made by the small intestine, sorry, the uh, pancreas. And it's used in the small intestine. Optimal pH, again, in between 7 and H, 7 and 8, uh, for that optimal pH. Uh, and now that polypeptide is broken down into peptides, and now we can break these peptides right down into their amino acids, and that's where our third enzyme comes into effect. And the third enzyme is called a peptidase. So it breaks down peptides. ASE indicates an enzyme. And then we have our 20 different amino acids, which we need in order to be able to uh, make proteins back up. That's those amino acids that we talked about during translation that will be brought to the mRNA in that ribosome uh, and to put into a certain order to make our proteins. So this is made by the small intestine and also used in the small intestine. Our optimal pH of approximately 7 to 8. And that is it for protein. So the last one that we're going to talk about is just one, but we'll put a little asterisk there. It only has one enzyme, but it uses another molecule to help it get its job done. And this is called an emulsifier. So an emulsifier is not an enzyme. Okay, this is physical digestion. So this is where it actually gets broken apart due to this emulsifier sticking in the fat. So what happens is this emulsifier, which is called bile, uh, has two parts of the phospholipid. It has, a, it has the phosphate head, which is polar, so it will stick out into where the water is, and these uh, nonpolar tails are going to stick into the lipid and actually causes it to break apart. So this physical or mechanical digestion causes the pieces to get smaller, which is better because it increases our surface area, which will make it so it will increase enzyme activity. Okay, uh, bile is produced uh, in the liver, but it's stored in the gallbladder. So if you've heard of people that have had to have their gallbladder removed, uh, it doesn't mean they can't, pr they can't break down fats, it's just they can't break it down as easily because they're bigger pieces. So they have to usually have a uh, lower fat diet. And then it's used in the small intestine. So now let's talk about the actual enzyme that uh, breaks down these triglycerides or these lipids. And we remember that it gets broken down into our glycerol and our fatty acid. So this one would be a saturated fatty acid. Oops. And what breaks this down? Lipids would be lipase. Uh, lipase is produced by the pancreas and used in the small intestine. 
we get our pH in small intestine is around 7 to 8. So those are our three process or three macromolecules that get broken down. As you can see, they're produced, the enzymes are produced in different spots. So we'll make a little graphic organizer next day to kind of keep track of where everything's produced and where it's actually uh, destined to do its job. So last little summary, summary I want you to think about is just the 331. And we're actually going to call this a 331 uh, plus because even though it has one enzyme, it has that bile uh, helper. Oops, let's go back. So we have our, these are for our, our fats or our lipids. This is our proteins. And these are our, our carbs. So hope that helps. Uh, bring any questions that uh, were confusing or if there's any part here that you didn't understand. And we're going to do a little uh, group work when we first get to class uh, next day and talk about any questions that you guys might have. Okay, hope this helps.